Trigonometric identities is all about proving that the left side of uh, a statement is equal to the right side of a statement, and that statement involves trigonometric ratios. Uh, so we're going to start by proving uh, a couple of what we call basic trig identities, uh, and then we're going to use those basic ones in order to prove some more complex trig identities. Okay. So what we want to keep in mind for these first two examples is that we already know sine theta is equal to y over r okay, when it comes to the x, y, and r values in the Cartesian plane. Cosine theta is equal to x over r, and tangent theta is equal to y over x. Okay? We want to keep those in mind for the first two, the basic ones that we're going to prove. Uh, but then after that, we won't need them for trig identities anymore. So because we want to prove that the left side here is equal to the right side, we're going to set this up like a left side, right side check as the t-chart. Okay? So we're going to start by rewriting the left side and the right side separately. The left side is tangent theta, and the right side is sine theta over cosine theta. And we want to... Uh, do something with the left-hand side and do something with the right-hand side separately uh, so that we end up with the same uh, value on each side. Okay. Now, tangent theta, based on our ratios here, we know is y over x. Okay. We can also replace sine theta and cosine theta with uh, the corresponding ratios here uh, using the x, y, and r values. So sine theta is y over r, and that's being divided by cosine theta, which is x over r. Okay. In order to divide, we take the reciprocal and multiply. So y over r times r over x. Okay. Here we have r divided by r, which is 1. And so we end up with y over x. Okay. So at the end, we can say that since... Uh, the left side equals the right side in our check, then we know that that statement we were asked to prove, tangent theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. Uh, we know that that statement is true. And actually, we can add in a therefore statement. So since left side equals right side, therefore, we know this statement is true. Here's another one of the basic trig identities. And so again, we want to set this up as a left side, right side check, because what we want to show is that the left side of this expression, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, is uh, equal to the right-hand side, which is 1. Okay. So we start by rewriting the left side and the right side. Now, there's not really anything that we can do with the right-hand side here, uh, but what we can do is uh, rewrite the left-hand side using the ratios. Okay? So sine theta we know is y over r, okay? and that's going to be squared. Cosine theta is x over r, and again, that's squared. Okay? So we get y squared over r squared plus x squared over r squared which already has a common denominator, so it's y squared plus x squared over r squared. Okay. Now, based on our triangles in the Cartesian plane, okay, if I draw a sketch over here, okay, if I'm looking at a terminal arm, and this is the related acute angle, so this is the right angle triangle that's formed with the terminal arm and the x-axis, okay, this is x, this is y, and this is r. And so we know that it's true that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So in the numerator, we've got exactly that, x squared plus y squared. We know that that is equal to r squared. And so we get r squared divided by r squared, which in fact is equal to 1. So we can say since left side equals right side in our check. Therefore, 
we know that the original statement sine squared theta plus, cos plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. We know that that is true. Okay. This is often referred to as the Pythagorean identity, uh, and that's just because we've got something squared plus something squared is equal to 1, which is something squared. And so you can see how that might be called the Pythagorean identity. All right, here's example three. Uh, so here we want to do a left side, right side check. So we're going to start setting that up. Okay, so separate the left side, which is 1 plus cotangent squared theta, uh, and the right side, which is cosecant squared theta. Now, once we've proved those two basic trig identities, uh, what we can do is use those identities in order to prove other identities, such as this one. Uh, so we're no longer going to use the x, y, and r values uh, because there's better ways that we can go about proving uh, that the left side is equal to the right side. Okay? Now, what we might notice here is that, first of all, we're dealing with uh, reciprocal trig ratios. And so we might want to convert them into the primary trig ratios. So we know that cotangent is equal to 1 over tangent, okay? which means that cotangent squared would have to be equal to 1 over tangent squared. Okay? Uh, cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine ratio, and so cosecant squared will be equivalent to 1 over sine squared. Now, in the first example, we proved that uh, tangent theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Okay. And so if I square this, it must be also true that tangent squared theta is equal to sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Okay. And so I can rewrite tangent squared theta as... sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Okay. Now here I've got 1 divided by this fraction, okay, which if I change it to multiplication, I would take the reciprocal of that fraction. Uh, so 1 times cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. Okay. I can find a common denominator here. Uh, so I can rewrite 1 as sine squared theta over sine squared theta. Okay. And I've got a common denominator. I can add numerators. Okay, and if you look at the numerator here, we've got sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. And in example two, we proved that that was equal to one. And so we can rewrite this as one over sine squared theta to get the same as the right-hand side. So then we can say since the left side is equal to the right side, therefore it must be true that one plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. All right, example four, we want to prove that tangent alpha is equal to sine alpha plus sine squared alpha over cosine alpha times 1 plus sine alpha. Now, the left side looks like it's pretty simplified already, so let's start working with the right side. Now, in the numerator, I can actually factor out a sine theta, uh, sorry, sine alpha. Uh, so if I factor out a sine alpha from the first term, I'm left with 1 because sine alpha divided by sine alpha is 1. The second term, if I take sine squared and divide by sine, I get 
sine alpha that's left. So that way if I multiplied sine alpha times one, I get sine alpha, sine alpha times sine alpha, I get sine alpha squared. Okay, in the denominator, we've got cosine alpha times one plus sine alpha. Okay, and then we see that we've got common factor in the numerator and denominator. One plus sine alpha divided by one plus sine alpha is one. And so we're left with sine alpha divided by cosine alpha, which from example one, we proved that that was equal to tangent alpha. And so once again, since the left side is equal to the right side, therefore we know that the statement above tangent alpha equals sine alpha plus sine squared alpha all over cosine alpha times one plus sine alpha is true.